we are with the 94th edition of Spooky Reviews from Spooky Ventures. I think I'm going backwards with this one, though. I mean, I reviewed High Fe Fear a few weeks ago. That movie is the third in a series of films. Today I'm looking at a DVD release of High Death, which is the second in that series. So it seems that I got the order wrong. You know what they say, though, better late than never. Like the other movie in this series, High Death is an anthology. There is a rich tradition of horror anthology films, and I generally like those kinds of movies. This one is definitely a lot more extreme than High Fear. I can see some people having trouble with certain scenes. Uh, there was one in particular that forced me to keep telling myself that it was a movie and just props in order to keep the nausea down. Uh, that's not a complaint. In fact, for those who dig gore, that's a compliment. The film features five stories, technically six if you include the wraparound story that pulls it all together. Two women are visiting L.A. and chance upon a strange horror movie tour of the city. The tour involves watching a series of movies and going to a location after each of them. So they watch the movies we see. The first story focuses heavily on addiction. That part really seems to only loosely connect to the final payoff, though. That ending, which showcases Death feeling bad about doing his job, feels a little like something that would have been touched on in shows like The Twilight Zone. I will say that due to the processing and uh, Death's voice, I had some serious trouble understanding everything he said. The second story is among the goriest of the whole film. It centers around a couple who are obsessed with serial killer memorabilia. The male in the couple takes to robbery and burglary to purchase the stuff that turns them on, literally. Unfortunately, he steals from the wrong person and that comes back to him in a bru very brutal way. In the next tale, a video store employee is working overnight to get the place ready for an audit when a DVD gets dropped into the night drop. The disc is not an ordinary one, and watching it was not the right decision. Our fourth tale centers around an actress coming in to read for a part. Things are not what they seem, and it ends tragically for several characters. I think that story might be my favorite of the whole movie, really. Uh, I really didn't see it playing out the way it did, and it gets very brutal. The last story is the kind of thing that probably hits creatives harder than it does other folks. It re uh, revolves around the high price exacted by the muse, particularly if you happen to choose the wrong one. I have to admit that I didn't expect the Lovecraftian turn, and seeing Cthulhu at the end was even less expected. I thought some of the sexual content in that story bordered on over the top, though. All in all, there were a lot of charms to this film. It's definitely a love letter to all things horror. Some of the stories seem a little hard to follow. The acting is actually pretty good for such an indie film, although it's not anything close to award winning. You don't come into films like this for that, though. I think I prefer the follow-up film, uh, but this one definitely has some interesting stories. Again, it's certainly not for everyone because it gets pretty extreme. Spooky Ventures is the home for spooky content and spooky merchandise on the web. Check it out today at SpookyVentures.com. And remember, always keep it spooky.